welcome to Everything Economics. We study microeconomics, macroeconomics, and every other type of economics here. This is the last part of the chapter, The Monetary System. The book is Brief Principles of Macroeconomics, 5th edition by N. Gregory Mankeev. In this part, we will discuss the tools of monetary control. There are three tools, and the central bank can use these tools to increase or decrease money supply in an economy. So let's begin. The Fed has three tools in its monetary toolbox. The first is open market operations, changing the reserve requirement, and finally, changing the discount rate. These three tools are available to every government and uh, every central bank in the world, and they can use uh, either the open market operations or changing the reserve requirement or changing the discount rate to increase money supply in, uh, in, in a country or to decrease it. The first tool available to the government is open market operations. It means the purchase and sale of government bonds by the central bank. There is either expansionary open market operations or contractionary open market operation. In the exp expansionary open market operation, if the central bank goal is expansionary, it buys bonds in order to pour cash into the banks. That puts pressure on the banks to lend that money out to consumers and businesses, which will then increase the money supply. So how this works is, if the central bank wants to increase money supply in an economy or in a country, it will purchase government bonds uh, from the public or from the commercial banks. So once it purchases the money, uh, the bonds from the central, uh, from the commercial banks, in return it will give money to the commercial bank. So once the commercial banks get the money, they will use that money to uh, give loans to the public. And as, as we have already discussed, the process of giving loans increases the money supply in an economy. Therefore, the central bank will give money to commercial banks in exchange for bonds. So the central bank is giving away money to the commercial banks and the commercial banks in return will give the bonds to the central bank. Hence, there will be more money for, uh, for the central banks to lend. And the lending process, as we have already discussed in previous parts, uh, increases the money supply. When central banks give out loan to people, it increases money supply in an economy. This is expansionary open market operation when the central bank's goal is to increase money supply and it uses its uh, uh, purchase of bonds to increase money supply. On the other hand, in the case of contractionary open market operation, the government's aim is to decrease money supply in the country or in the economy. So what it will do is it will sell the bonds in order to pull money out of the system. So there is central bank it will sell bonds to commercial banks and the commercial banks in return will give back money to central banks so the money supply the money available for commercial banks to lend to the public will decrease and which will decrease their uh, capability to uh, incre uh, to loan money to the people and as you know the loaning process increases money supply in this case because the amount of loans will decrease in the country the money supply will decrease as well therefore expansionary open market operations increase the money supply in the economy because the central bank is putting more money towards uh, the commercial banks 
is giving more money to the commercial banks in exchange for bonds and when commercial banks get more money they will increase uh, the amount of loans and the loaning process increases the money supply and then in the contractionary open market operations the central bank li would like to decrease the money supply it will do that by selling the bonds to the commercial banks who will then give the money to central bank and the capability or the ability of commercial banks to increase money supply would decrease and that would decrease the money supply as well this is the first uh, method for the first uh, mo monetary tool to increase or decrease m uh, money supply the second one is changing the reserve requirement regulations on the minimum amount of reserves that banks must hold against deposits reserve requirements are the amount of funds that a bank holds in reserve to ensure that it is able to meet liabilities in case of sudden withdrawals reserve requirements are a tool used by the central bank to increase or decrease money supply in the economy and influence interest rates this method uh, the central bank can use this method to increase or decrease the reserve requirement how it does is uh, we have already discussed in, in the previous part where we discussed how uh, the loaning process increases or decreases money supply so for example there was this T account of one bank let's say it bank A uh, assume that it gets deposits of one hundred dollars and the reserve requirement is five percent so the reserve it is required to keep out of this hundred dollars is five dollars and other ninety five dollars the bank will give away as loans and this ninety five will further increase the money supply in the economy uh, we have already discussed this uh, the the process so I'm not going to get into that but if the reserve requirement was let's say 10% uh, if the uh, if the central banks central bank wants to decrease money supply in the economy uh, by decreasing the amount of loans available it will increase the reserve requirement to 10% in that case out of these hundred deposits the bank commercial banks will have to keep ten dollars as reserves and will have ninety dollars to give away as loans therefore as the amount of loan decreases the money supply will decrease this is the process of how the changing the reserve requirement decrease or increase the money supply in the other case the uh, the central bank can uh, reduce the reserve requirement from maybe five percent to two percent in that case they will uh, give out loans of 98 and reserves of two and because the loans have increased the money supply will also increase and uh, that's the main idea that's the general idea reserve requirements are the amount of funds that a bank holds in reserve to ensure that it is able to meet liabilities in case of certain withdrawals we have already discussed this I hope it's clear so this is the second method of how the central bank can increase or decrease money supply in an economy the third and final method available to the central bank is changing the discount rate which is the interest rate charged by the central bank on the loans that it gives to other commercial banks if the central bank raises the discount rate then commercial banks will reduce their borrowing if the central bank reduces the discount rate then the commercial banks will increase their borrowing this is pretty simple so here the commercial banks they take loan from the central bank okay so if the central bank is charging higher discount rate or uh, in other words the interest rate if the central bank is charging higher interest rate then commercial banks will reduce their borrowing because it will be expensive for them to take more loans from the central bank so they will reduce their borrowing which will then decrease the money supply but if the central banks want to increase 
the money supply they will decrease their interest rate on the loans that it gives to commercial banks and then commercial banks will increase their borrowing from the central bank and once they increase their borrowing they will have more money to lend to the people or give out to the people as loans and as the loaning process increases the money supply therefore the money supply will increase when the central bank uh, wants to reduce money supply it will increase the discount rate then commercial banks will reduce their borrowing they will decrease their decrease their loans and ultimately the money supply will decrease as well if the central bank bank wants to increase money supply they will reduce the discount rate commercial banks will increase their borrowing and they will have more money to give out as loans so loans will increase and money supply will increase so this is the third method there are three methods we have already discussed all three of them and i hope they are clear if you have any question you can just put them in the comment section i will definitely answer and i'll see you in uh, in the next video and this chapter is finished we have already discussed uh, covered all basic concepts of the monetary policy and uh, uh, the chapter from uh, the brief principles a uh, book from Gregory Menkeev have been covered in this video and if you have any question ask away thank you so much i'll see uh, take care i'll see you in the next video